It's called a balalaika. Its root word, balalaiket, in Russian means to chatter. I've come today to talk to Pibzekul. He's acclaimed to be the best non-Russian balalaikist in the world. How long have I been playing the balalaika? Hmm, many years. Uh, since I was 18, so therefore that... 50 years. Oh God, am I that old? Yeah, 50 years. So tell me a bit about the history of you and the balalaika. I joined a group of amateur dancers called the, the balalaika dance group. And um, I wanted to learn how to do the Cossack dance. One day, I think it was on my, fir my third visit to the, uh, to the group, I heard a lovely sound coming down the corridor. I'd never heard a sound like that before. And I went into one of the classrooms there, um, and there were these three chaps playing balalaikas. It was a lovely sound. I fell in love with it straight away. days later I was with uh, a Russian emigre friend of mine at his house and there was a balalaika hanging on the wall. I said, ooh, that's a balalaika, isn't it? And uh, my friend said, oh yes, do you want to try it? So he handed it to me, I tried it, and he says, oh, you can keep it. Oh, I said, thank you very much. Well, I progressed from there. Um, I practiced on the balalaika and I got uh, to be pretty good. <laughs> to visit London. They were performing at the Albert Hall and a Russian friend of mine uh, took me backstage to meet some of the artists. Uh, and just for fun, um, I saw the balalaika player, the soloist. I showed him what I could do and he was horrified. He said, no, you don't play with the plectrum. And he showed me how to use my finger. Two years later, the Red Army were back in town, again at the Albert Hall. Again, I went backstage and saw Ignatieff and then that's, that's when I had my second lesson. He highly approved of the progress I had made and showed me how to pluck with thumb and index finger on one string. And that, those were the only lessons I ever had. And on the balalaika, you don't play with a pick. No, to make it really hard, you play just with your index finger, strumming all the strings at once. Of course, it, you are wondering, does it hurt? Yes, it hurts, but Russians have special remedy for this. It's called vodka. So what was the next stage of your life? I went to study um, in Poland at Warsaw University. I took, of course, my balalaika with me. And uh, with all the practice that I was doing, after three years of studying in Poland, I was pretty good. <laughs> I came to England and uh, began playing with a uh, guitarist that I found called John Langdon, known as Jopnik, uh, a good friend. Anyway, that was 1970. We played in restaurants, we started playing in concerts, and very soon we got very popular and began to get bookings on TV and radio. <laughs> this point that I realized that in order to bring the balalaika to uh, a greater number of people it was necessary or it would be a good, certainly a good idea if I could create an ensemble. I created in 1974 I started a group called Tsiganka which means Gypsy Girl. Uh, a few years later we were doing two tours a year of North America. In 1972 I got offered a job. It was my opportunity to see Russia from one end to the other. Leningrad, Moscow, Odessa, Samarkand, Tashkent, and even Siberia, the town of Irkutsk, which is next to Lake Baikal. That was my dream. There's lots you can do on the balalaika. It's a very expressive instrument. You can play on one string. 
you can pluck on one string and alternately pluck the other strings. Everywhere I went, I'd taken some uh, rubles with me, uh, very illegal, and uh, I went round buying good instruments when I got an opportunity, good balalaikas. What I would do was, uh, if I had a friendly tourist, I would get the rather nice balalaika wrapped up in tourist paper, tourist shop paper, so it looked like a cheap um, souvenir instrument. And I would ask them, would you mind taking this back to London with you uh, and go along to the Borshten Tears restaurant where you'll find a musician playing there called Shopnik. Tell him you've got this balalaika from Bibbs and he'll be so pleased to see you, he'll buy you a drink. That's why I've ended up with quite a lot of balalaikas, good ones. Are those all your balalaikas? Well, not all of them. There are more uh, upstairs and in other rooms all around the place, but... These are the best ones. Bella like a house, Shepperton. So, what kind of places have you played at? Uh, I've performed at the uh, at the Royal Albert Hall, Queen Elizabeth Hall. You name the hall, we've probably played there. I've never been to the last night of the proms, and this is this is for atmosphere. This is actually the bull ring. Can you give any examples of the films and soundtracks that you've played in? I've played on soundtracks like Snatch. <laughs> The man who knew too little. Good God. Enemy at the gates. signed with a record label. Why? I'm a free spirit. I've made so many sacrifices for my music that it would be, uh, I would be a traitor if I were to just cross it all off. So I'm not signed with anybody, I'm not tied to anybody, I don't have to do anything I don't want to. What advice would you give to people that wish to learn the balalaika? Trim your fingernails, especially this one, which you need to strum with. Then you need a good instrument, and instruments unfortunately are not so easy to find. They next need an instruction book in the absence of an instructor. Now of course there are a few books around, but the best one I have to tell you is this one. It's a really big book, everything is here, and oh look, it was written by me. In a Russian, in true Russian tradition, there should always be a bottle of vodka not far away. One for you. Nastarovia. Nastarovia. Nastarovia, everybody. Nastarovia. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. Oh. Well, of course, we're supposed to eat a little zakuska, as they say, a little something afterwards. Very important. However, if Russians don't have anything to, to bite after they've drunk, what you do is you use your armpit.